We are just a few days away from a rare event in the sky, a total solar eclipse. Around here, we'll get a partial view of it. Our Brian Hackney spoke to a Bay Area sky watcher willing to travel to get a better look. Meet a fellow Cal Poly physics grad. My name is Caitlin McArdle. I'm an exhibit developer here at the Exploratorium. She's got big plans for April 8th. When did you make reservations? Not as early as I should have. <laughs> Caitlin and millions of others are headed to four minutes of darkness at midday. The total solar eclipse. That was the craziest thing I've ever seen. Yes, that was amazing. That was absolutely amazing. Uh and you can join us on Monday for Eclipse Watch, our special coverage of the solar eclipse. It all starts at 10 a.m. streaming on CBS News Bay Area. And you can find us on the free CBS News app or on Pluto TV. Across the Bay Area, we have a lot of great scientific minds to help us take in the events like the upcoming eclipse. Coming up, a science educator from the Exploratorium joins me live to break it all down and talk about what they're doing to help people get the best experience. This is CBS News Bay Area with Elizabeth Cook. Hi there, happy Friday. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Elizabeth Cook. We are counting down to Monday's solar eclipse and for some parts of the world, it will be several minutes of total darkness. For us here in the Bay Area, it will be a partial eclipse, but definitely still an incredible sight to see. We are breaking down the significance of this event in the skies and how you can watch it safely. We are just a few days away from a rare event in the sky, a total solar eclipse. Now around here, we're gonna get a partial view. Our Brian Hackney talked to a Bay Area sky watcher willing to travel to get a better look. Meet a fellow Cal Poly physics grad. My name is Caitlin McArdle. I'm an exhibit developer here at the Exploratorium. She's got big plans for April 8th. Ooh. When did you make reservations? Not as early as I should have. <laughs> Caitlin and millions of others are headed to four minutes of darkness at midday. The total solar eclipse. That was the craziest thing I've ever seen. Yes, that was amazing. That was absolutely amazing. Uh, I'm at a loss for words. They're talking about the 2017 total eclipse which was Dr. Noah Petro's first. I found that it was remarkable how many people kind of didn't get what the big deal was until they got what the big deal was. And then it was uh, amazing. It was just fantastic. It is absolutely unforgettable. I would love to experience it again. That chance is coming April 8th. For the last time in decades, the sun and moon will be in perfect alignment to cast a shadow 115 miles wide where a total eclipse will touch down off the coast of Mazatlan, cross the border into Texas, and sweep diagonally up through New England and into the Canadian Maritimes. 43 million people live within that narrow path of totality. Outside of it? From the San Francisco Bay Area, we will not see totality, correct? That is correct. It's about 30, 35 percent, let's check my notes here, yeah, 34 percent of an eclipse, which Again, as a, as a nice nudge reminder that we are in this nice dynamic environment between the Earth, the Moon, and the Sun. But you've got to be in the path of totality to really, I think, feel it. The partials are cool. The totality is amazing. Like, actual amazement. <laughs> At this point, airfare to totality is hovering around $1,000. Of course... You could drive for 25 hours. You hear everyone going crazy here. For four minutes of totality. Is there anything like it? No, nothing like it at all. I would want to see as many total solar eclipses as I possibly can in my life. So let's hope this doesn't happen. It's a long wait until 2045, when the next total solar eclipse makes landfall in the U.S. You haven't seen it. You haven't seen anything. 
Very dramatic there, Ryan. Thank you so much. Now, you can join us on Monday for Eclipse Watch, our special coverage of the solar eclipse. It all starts at 10 a.m. streaming on CBS News Bay Area, and you can find us on the free CBS News app or on Pluto TV. Now, across the Bay Area, of course, we have a lot of great scientific minds to help us take in the events like the upcoming eclipse. Coming up, a science educator from the Exploratorium joins me live to break it all down and to talk about what they're doing to help folks get the best experience. We are on Eclipse Watch, just a few days before the rare event in our skies. Joining me now is Ken Finn. He is a science educator at the Exploratorium in San mm -hmm. Francisco. Thank you so much for being here. Elizabeth, it's so nice to be here with you. So Monday's a big day for you. Tell us a little bit about how significant this is in the world of science. Well, it's a big deal because it's something that maybe brings the whole Earth together and yeah. certainly the people in the United States right now because the path of totality travels so far through our country so so many people can be involved. And at the Exploratorium, we're really excited when anything makes people curious. Mm -hmm. And that's the doorway to opening up to learning, being interested in the night sky, the sun, the planets. and all the stuff around us. I think these eclipses really kind of put into perspective how small we are and how big the universe is, right? Absolutely, even to think that the path of totality is only like barely 100 miles wide. Yeah. That's not a whole lot, so it's like <laughs> It's amazing. Okay, so just to be clear, here in the Bay Area, we're not gonna see the total solar eclipse. It's Absolutely It's gonna not. be a little portion of it, Right, we're not gonna, exactly. We're not gonna have the sky go black or mm -hmm. the birds start singing. You might not even notice much change in the ambient light. It might seem a little bit smoky or mm -hmm. something, but um, what you do notice is that if you're standing under a tree where you normally see the dappled light of the little circles of sun, those circles are gonna have a bite taken out of them. Or if you grab something fun, now this is a safe way to look at the eclipse, mm -hmm. grab something fun from the kitchen, a cheese grater, a colander, the steamer basket you put into the pot, hold that out and make a shadow with it, and you'll see all those tiny dots, which are images of the sun, begin to have about 33% of themselves missing right around 13 minutes after 11 on Monday morning. So these are great little tips, but I'm wondering if you really want to go outside and experience it by looking at the actual mm -hmm. eclipse, looking at the sun, we have these little nifty glasses here. I know this is probably the safest way, but can you give us some other little tips on how to <laughs> truly appreciate the eclipse? I think too, if you really want to be looking at the sun, mm -hmm. which I tell people never to do, you want to have actual eclipse glasses that'll have some type of uh, language inside saying where these filters were made and that it'd be safe to actually look directly at the sun with these. And what you'll see is the solar disk Mm -hmm. and you'll see the moon moving in front of it. And that'll be so exciting to actually watch it happen real time. So you mentioned look where it's made. What should we be looking at to make sure that these are real, safe, legitimate? Mine have a whole lot here written down about the safety certification and who manufactured it, and usually some kind of optics company. It looks like you have that writing also. Okay. And what you have here is a piece of uh, aluminized mylar. Basically, there's some metal sprayed onto this plastic, and that is going to reflect most of the sun's light and let just a little bit through a safe amount that you can look at the sun and not hurt your eyes at all. So this is really the only way, so this is the writing that he was talking about Absolutely. Here. This is the only way that you truly can look at the sun safely during the eclipse. Agreed. Okay. Now sometimes someone may be set up with a telescope and that will have a filter on the front of it so you'll be looking through with no mm -hmm. solar glasses because the telescope itself has been protected. Okay, I know a lot of folks in this day and age want to take a picture of it mm. for social media to say, I was there, here I am, here's a solar eclipse behind me, but not a good idea, actually. That can damage your eyes as well. Exactly, because you really don't want to be pointing any optical device to the sun with your eyes involved with that. And certainly don't even wear these and put on binoculars, no. <laughs> okay. Because that's just going to magnify the sun's light, right? Right. onto this. These are designed for just looking at the sun without any optical devices there. So, you want to be safe so you can see the next solar eclipse. That's right, right absolutely. <laughs> so only look at the solar eclipse if you have these glasses. Okay, best, you know the Exploratorium is having a fun event, so absolutely. come enjoy it and mm -hmm. really appreciate all that it has to offer. Can you tell us about that? It's going to be really exciting because a lot of our staff right now aren't at the Exploratorium. We have staff in Mexico and staff in Texas mm -hmm. 
with telescopes, with folks from NASA, and we're going to be live streaming the eclipse from either of these two places, whichever has the best view, mm -hmm. uh, to uh, large monitors that we'll have at the Exploratorium. We're going to have all kinds of activities. Our floor facilitators will be walking people through kind of the mechanics of what's going on to make a total solar eclipse occur. And uh, it's going to be a great learning time for all. I love it. I love how events like this, though, really ignite children's imaginations and inspire them to want to get into science, right? Absolutely. Whether it's something that you've learned from, I'm old, people landing on the moon mm -hmm. or a amazing astronomical event like this or some other scientific thing, a great weather phenomena, perhaps an earthquake could get somebody interested mm -hmm. in seismology. Yeah, we just want to open that door to curiosity in the natural world and the phenomena around us are a great starting place. Yeah, it's going to be a very special day on Monday. Thanks so much for being it's here. It's a pleasure today. to be here. Thank it's you for be, having me. I know, big day at the Exploratorium, no question. We'll hope to see you there. All right. And coming up, if you would like to go to the Exploratorium, um, here's the info there for the Eclipse viewing party. It's Monday from 10 a.m. to 1230 at Pier 15. You'll get a free pair of solar viewing glasses. Again, the only way you truly can safely look at the solar eclipse. It'll all be there. And of course, you'll be surrounded by experts to talk about it, which is even better. And Oakland Chabot Space and Science Center is also holding an eclipse party on Monday. They're inviting folks to come watch and take part in special science demonstrations. Sky gazers will also get eclipse safe glasses and have a chance to look at the interstellar spectacle through a telescope. Well, how about experiencing the total solar eclipse 30,000 feet in the air? Reporter Manuel Borjorquez looks at how one airline is offering the flight of a lifetime to get that incredible view. Start a left-hand turn. Delta Airlines captains Phil Marshall and Phil Daniels recently hopped inside this Airbus 220 simulator at the company's headquarters in Atlanta. They're experienced pilots, clearly. But come Monday, they'll be doing something new chasing a solar eclipse. I think that we're going to be able to provide a really unique experience. Delta offered the first April 8th flight from Austin to Detroit last month. It sold out within 24 hours. So the airline added a second flight from Dallas to Detroit, routes chosen because they're nearest to the path of the eclipse. They'll operate normally until they reach an area over southeast Missouri. Ready. That's when, as we saw in the simulator, the captains plan to bank the plane 30 degrees once on each side to give passengers a view of the eclipse. They'll have four minutes of total eclipse time to do it. It seems like a lot of things have to align in order for that to happen. Absolutely, but that's what we're good at. That's coming from Delta's operations and customer center, where we learned the level of precision needed to make it all happen. The moon's shadow will travel at more than 1,500 miles per hour over the United States. We're traveling at about 400 miles per hour. So the sun is actually going to be catching up to us. So we're taking off before it even hits the U.S. border on the south end, and it will catch up to us. Passengers will wear specialized glasses to protect their eyes during the eclipse, which Captain Marshall, for the safety of all involved, will not be looking at. Still, he says, it'll be the flight of a lifetime. So this is fantastic for me. It's always, every day is like a dream come true, though, for us as pilots. And you can look for special coverage of the eclipse Monday on CBS Mornings. Co-anchor Tony DeCopel will be live along the path of totality starting at 7 a.m. And then join Nora O'Donnell for a CBS News special report, Total Eclipse of the Heartland, starting Monday at 11 a.m. Now, still ahead, you've heard about the glasses, of course. We just talked about them. But that's not the only safety note you need about the upcoming eclipse. We'll talk about one common misconception before you try to get a glimpse. Excitement is growing for Monday's solar eclipse, but eye doctors have a reminder. Don't watch it without the proper protection. Direct sunlight can cause permanent eye damage. And a recent survey found that about a third of Americans still haven't gotten that message. And experts say sunglasses will not cut it. Special solar viewing glasses are needed. And make sure to keep them on the entire time, even while taking a selfie because the sun is reflecting off the screen from your phone and then that is reflected directly into your eye. So that is a dangerous situation. 
Another warning, extra precautions are needed if you're going to use a telescope because they concentrate the light. For more information on all this and how to find a list of verified vendors for those viewing glasses, visit the website for the American Astronomical Society. It also includes information on how to fake spot the fakes. And as millions of people prepare to watch the eclipse coming up, see what it could mean for animals in the wild and in your home. As humans look toward the solar eclipse on Monday, we're also learning out how the spectacle may affect animals. Scientists say animals tend to respond in their own way, like these bees in Tennessee that suddenly returned to their hives during the eclipse seven years ago. But one group of animals that may not care that much about the eclipse is our pets. They tend to be a little smarter than we are. Uh, we, they know not to stare at the sun. They know better. That means your furry friends probably won't be needing any eclipse glasses. But vets say think twice about bringing pets into big crowds on Monday, especially if they have a tendency to be anxious or get stressed. We want to thank you for joining us as we look ahead to the solar eclipse on Monday and how it will affect our Bay Area skies. And remember, you can always join us for our special coverage, Eclipse Watch. It all starts 10 a.m. on Monday, streaming on CBS News Bay Area. You can find us on the free CBS News app or on Pluto TV.